Please pick up. Please pick up. It worked. Hi, Gunner. Hi, Alvin. Uh, where are you? Did you redecorate the toy store? Nah, I'm on my way somewhere. Ducked into somebody's house to answer your call. Whose house? It's me. What do you want, kid? I got a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll be quick. I was hoping you could help me with something. Of course you do. Everybody always wants a piece of gunner. Are you okay? Peaches and green. Spit it out, kid. You want me to steal you some cash, break somebody's legs, burn down your ex's house? Uh, no. You sure? I got a whole shelf of extremely flammable teddy bears at the store. Made in the USA. I would never ask you to do anything illegal. Why not? That's all old gunner steel is good for. That's not true. You can do whatever you want to do. What I want is to finish getting where I'm going. So either tell me what type of blood you're squeezing out of this stone or I'm hanging up. Gee, uh, okay, um, I, I, I need to ask you about a night four years ago at a sex club. Which one? The blowhole? No, the, yeah, the blowhole. I saw some security footage of you driving my Aunt Angela, Gabby Stockhart, and Gabby's wife Brandy there. You're talking about the night Mrs. Sunderman made like a hair colorist and died. That's right. Um, I don't know if you know anything about what happened after they went inside. I don't know nothing about nothing, and you can't prove otherwise. I'm not insinuating anything. I know Gabby was responsible for what happened, but there are still a lot of questions. Like, why was Aunt Angela there? Where was Uncle Edwin? And why is he even covering for Gabby all of these years? That is a lot of questions. Do you have any answers? What's in it for me? Excuse me? You're asking for something. What do I get in return? Um, my gratitude. The satisfaction of knowing you helped bring the truth to light. An inner warmth from helping your only child. Yeah, who's that? Me? That's what I thought too. But sorry, kid. We've both been played. I don't understand. I ain't your pops. Mr. Sunderman got a DNA test that proves it. Your mom fed me a line on account if she wanted info from me. And I gave it to her like a sucker. But no, that can't be true. Mother told me. Although she never actually said it outright. Oh, oh Connor, I can't believe it. Believe it. Now, if you'll excuse me, since I ain't got no reason to break good no more, I'm gonna get back to being a low-down, rotten criminal as God intended. Oh, um, okay, if you have to. You, uh, you okay? I'm still processing. To gain something so magnificent and then lose it again. It's terrible. It's like climate change for people. Are you okay? Me? Yes. Sure. Better than ever. It ain't like I was looking forward to running my toy store all legit like with you. Building something real and lasting with someone I care about and who cares about me. Enjoying a relationship with a child of my own who sees the best in me and wants me to help bring out the best in them. Finally understanding for the first time in my life what true familial love feels like. Sounds like work. Just because we're not related doesn't mean we can. Here it comes. Okay. Give me the pitch, kid, but make it snappy. What? What's the offer? Offer for what? For the info you're looking for. You gonna play on the old steel heart strings like your mother did? No, I wouldn't do that. You're saying that this isn't bothering you, Gunner, but I think it is. So don't even think about that night at the blowhole. I'll get what I need somewhere else. You focus on your own self-care right now. I'll be right here when you're ready to talk. Talk? About what? About your feelings. About my feelings. Our feelings. But we ain't related. I ain't your father. That's true. It doesn't mean we can't have a relationship. Ugh. You're trying to get in my head. No. Wah. It ain't gonna work. Nobody gets in Gunner Steele's head, except the prison doctor who drilled a hole in it that one time. And that was for commercial research purposes. Gunner, I'm not. Forget it, kid. I gotta go. I'm gonna be late for my flight. Flight? Oh, don't ask me about that. I won't tell you nothing. 
Fine. Okay. I'm sorry. And stop asking me about the blowhole. I didn't say anything. You were thinking it. I really wasn't. I work for Mr. Sonderman, and I got a strict code of professionalism. That's very admirable. Stop saying nice things about me. Sorry. It won't make me tell you that I drove them there that night because back then I worked for Mrs. Sonderman, and she told me to. Okay. Well, that after she died and I started working for Mr. Sunderman, he hired me to clean out the blowhole and get rid of any evidence. Because I ain't going to tell you. Uh, hold on, I have to write that down. No, don't bother. I ain't telling you that I like to keep a little leverage available in case a boss ever tries to make me a patsy. And maybe I didn't do such a thorough job of cleaning out the blowhole as Mr. Sunderman thinks. And maybe there's something there that you'd be interested in seeing. I ain't telling you that, so stop asking. Got it. You got nothing. I'm going. Goodbye, Gunner. And thanks for nothing. Yeah. You take care of yourself, kid. You too, Gunner. You can do this, Gabby. Every problem has a solution. Right now, your problem is that the man you thought was your best friend may have gotten you involved in investment fraud or worse. The solution is to get more information out of him so you can figure out the solution. Wait, does that mean our meeting today counts as another problem? Or step one of a two-step solution? Hmm, that's a problem. But every problem has a solution? I need my spreadsheet. Gabby. Griffin. Sorry, buddy. I don't have time to talk. I'm waiting for Mr. Sunderman. Gabby, I just watched you have sex. Maybe I have a minute. You're, you're much more flexible than I thought. What kind of stretching exercises do you do? Wait, that's not why I'm calling. I'm sorry. I'm very agitated, Gabby. Slow down, Griffin. What do you mean you just watched me have sex? Did you stay on the call with me and Vivian the other night? No, I'm talking about... Uh, hey, did you have sex with Elvin's mother? <laughs> That's great, Gabby. I, I've been really worried that you haven't been enjoying healthy relations since the night Brandy didn't get hit by a car. I wouldn't call it healthy. Did you say didn't get hit by a car? Oh, uh, yeah, that's why I'm calling. Gabby, you lied to me. How could you? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll remind you. Brandy's coma. It didn't happen in a car accident. It, it happened at the blowhole. How do you know about that? So it's true. Gabby, why would you lie to me? You're the person I love most in this whole world. Oh, Griffin, I'm sorry. I didn't want to, but Eddie said I couldn't tell you or mom or dad or anyone for your own safety. Tell me now, Gabby, because it sure looked like my big sister killed someone, but I still believe she would never hurt anyone on purpose. And except for the hurt she caused by lying to this innocent, <laughs> trusting face. Are you sure you want to hear this, Griffin? I want to hear everything, Gabby, including how you did that move where... Mrs. Sunderman was suddenly up on your shoulders and, and then you both flipped and, and Brady was in a bridge position between you. I'd like to try it, but you moved too fast for me to follow, so. <laughs> I'm gonna gloss over the sex details, little brother, sorry. But I'll tell you everything else. <sighs> you know, I met Brandy right after I moved to Distant Falls about five years ago. What you don't know is she introduced me to Angela and Edwin Sunderman, who she knew through the sex club circuit. The three of them got me into some pretty wild stuff. You could have told me that. I may not talk about it much, but I'm actually pretty broad-minded about sex. Yeah, I picked up on that, buddy. But Angela was kind of a snob and didn't want it getting around that she associated with people outside of her economic circle. So, Brandy and I agreed that we'd keep it all a secret. That's why she and Eddie didn't come to the wedding. Instead, they met you after the reception, right? In that car I saw you get into? Just Angela. Eddie wasn't there. 
As a wedding present, Eddie rented out the entire blowhole for the two of us. He gave the whole staff the night off so we'd have the run of the place. Angela came by to tell us congratulations and give us a ride there. But when we were saying goodbye in the parking lot, we invited her to come in and join us for a drink. I wish she had said no. Why would you ask her if you wish she had said no? Oh, uh, I forgot she ends up dead at the end of the story. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Right. So I made us some drinks at the bar, then a few more. And before you know it, we're asking Angela to stay a little longer, maybe help try out some of the new equipment. The blowhole had just finished construction on what they called the Pump Puppet Playhouse. I don't even know how to describe it. The whole room was this, this, this sex machine. I saw it, but I couldn't figure out how it worked. I, I'd never seen anything like it. It was custom built for the blowhole. Nobody had used it yet. We were the first and the last. So you and your partner strapped yourself into a flexible metal rigging, which is attached to these long rods to the ceiling. The rods move you around like a puppet on a string. It can run on its own or a third person can work the controls and make you do whatever they want. I've tried puppet play before, but only with someone's fist up. This was much more intense than that. Brandy and I were gonna try it, but I was a little nervous. So Angela offered to test it out first. I wish I had said no. Why do you wish you had said no if you were nervous to try it? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, right. It's because Ms. Sunderman dies. It's such an interesting story. I keep forgetting I know how it ends. So they strapped themselves in and I fired up the machine. It seemed simple enough to operate at first. Well, I made them, you know. Lesbian stuff. Right. Lesbian stuff. But then the machine sped up. All on its own, it, it lifted them into the air, pressing them against each other and onto each other and into each other, faster and faster and faster. They yelled for me to stop, but, but controls were more complicated than I thought. I tried to make it slow down, but instead I made it go even faster. Oh, it slammed them into each other again and again and again. I panicked and pulled the plug. I thought that would make it stop, that it would save them, but but it didn't. All I did was turn off the control panel. The machine itself was powered separately and without any new commands, it just kept doing the last thing it had been told to do. To go faster. It slammed them together one last time and then it seized up, stopped. They came loose and went flying. Brandy hit her head and never woke up and Angela, Oh, Angela. What happened to Angela? Oh, right, she died. Should have called an ambulance. But I just stood there. I guess I was in shock. I don't know how long it was before Eddie showed up. Mr. Sunderman, how did he know? He didn't. Not until he walked in. He was looking for Angela. And her driver told him she had come inside with us. He saw everything and, and I'm starting to have my doubts about what kind of man Eddie is. But one thing I know, he loved his wife. He saw her lying there and it was awful, Griffin. Gosh, poor Mr. Sunderman. Eddie crying snapped me out of it. I started to call 911, but, but he grabbed my phone and told me to stay quiet and he'd take care of it. After that, it's, it's a little hazy, honestly. I remember him saying that if I told the truth, I'd go to prison. And then what would happen to Brandy? And Angela's reputation would be destroyed. And didn't I owe it to her to, to prevent that? So you lied for good reasons? I guess. I wanted to be there for Brandy. But also, I didn't want to go to prison. And Eddie offered me a way to avoid it. So I kept my mouth shut and I did what he said. He was right, Gabby. Gosh, I feel terrible now. I was starting to think that maybe Mr. Sunderman wasn't such a nice person, but he kept you from going to jail for something that was an accident. 
you didn't hurt Brandy or, or, or Ms. Sunderman on purpose. I knew you wouldn't. I've got to tell Audrey and Elvin. Audrey knows about this? Sure. Oh, we watched the video together. What video? A uh, security video of that night. Uh, Mr. Sunderman had it on his computer. I used his password to watch it without permission. <laughs> I should probably apologize. No, don't say anything to Mr. Sunderman about this, Griffin. He told me he erased all the security footage. Why would he keep it? Unless he wanted to be able to use it against me if he ever needed it. Oh, Gabby, that can't be true. Mr. Sunderman went to all that trouble for you. I, I mean, just think of all, all the things he had to do to keep you out of jail. He, he probably had to pay off all the doctors so they lied about how his wife died and how Brandy got hurt. And then he had to clean up all the evidence at the club and then plant fake evidence to make it look like Brandy had a car accident. Heck, he probably had to bribe half of Distant Falls in order to cover up something this big. Would a bad person do all that? Yes, Griffin, yes! I think you'd have to be a bad person to even know how to do all that in the first place. Why didn't I ever think this through before? Griffin, Eddie is on his way over here now. I'm going to tell him that I want you to come back and work for me at the bar, okay? You want me to work for you, Gabby? <laughs> Hooray, the Stockhart siblings together again. The important part is you stay away from Mr. Sunderman. Promise me you'll do that, Griffin. Oh, I promise, Gabby. Don't worry. Everything will be better now. You'll see. Oh, um, hold on, Gabby. I think someone just came in. Don't you live alone? Sure do. So I better go see who it is so I can say hello. Griffin, wait. Be careful. Oh, it's you. Hello. Is there something else you needed me to do? Oh, only I won't be working for... Uh, hey, what's that lead pipe for? Oh, oh. Griffin! Uh, Griffin! Oh my God, Griffin! Griffin!